in Darkness Lake Cave. Their destination, the Games Academy somewhere out at sea. Their mission, to become games playing legends and to crack the challenge of Games Master. an extremely noisy edition of the Games Master Team Championship. Once again, three more teams are going to do their best to try and guarantee themselves a place in the championship semi-final. Coming up in a couple of weeks' time, you've got to watch out for it. Right, do you want to meet the teams? Yeah! Of course I want to meet the teams. So do you, so do I. Over here, let's go. Control. Right, what's your name? Kevin, I'm team captain. Yeah? Good man. Kevin, you and you and Stuart. Stuart! So Stuart, what would you say your favourite game is? Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Ah, so this is your beat em up expert, is it? Yeah. This is your beat em up expert, yeah? yeah. How do you think you're gonna do tonight, Jack? Well, um they've done well to get here, but I think we can beat them. Yes, well, there's brave words, right? Give them a big round of applause, we'll meet the next team. Telly, look, he wants to be on telly. This boat, yeah. Nice one. Okay, then. All right, the Elite Three. Looking very cool. Here they are, the Elite Three. Tell us your names. My name's Matthew from Birmingham. Team Matthew. Captain. Team Captain Matthew, Team Captain from Ashton. Birmingham. Ashton. Ashton. Liam. Liam. So, guys, what do you think you're going to do? I'm asking you. Yeah. Send them back to Dundee. Going to send them back to Dundee? Crying. Crying. Yeah. Right, give them a big cheer. <laughs> We're with Arsenal. Well All right, Arsenal. Awesome. <laughs> Come out, RCC. So, tell us your names. I'm Turin and I'm team captain. Team captain Turin. My name's Ahmed. <laughs> you sure? Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. sure? My name's Erfan Dexter. Ah, oh, is it Erfan? <laughs> right, good. Okay, so uh, tell us what RCC means, because we don't know, do we? Reading, Reading Console. Console Crew. The Reading Console Crew. Well, here they are, obviously, from Reading. Yeah. yeah. So, how do you think you're going to do tonight? We're definitely going to win a Dexter. You are? Yeah. All right, well, good luck to all of you, especially you, Erfan. Yeah. All right, then, thank you very much. Give a big round of applause for this team, RCC. <laughs> Tonight's platform challenge is on Yogi Bear for the Super Nintendo. Our contestants have 45 seconds and one life to collect as many clocks as possible and avoiding spooky balloons along the way. I'll award five points to the team who collects the most clocks, two to the second and zero to the losers. Is Yogi Bear. With me is Dave Perry, my resident co-commentator and general all-round good geezer. Dave Perry, Dave Perry. All right then. So the game's Yogi Bear. They've got uh, 45 seconds to collect as many clocks as they possibly can and one life. That's right. We've got Kevin Hogg up first. He's in the hot seat. He's playing for the Megabytes from Dundee. Dave, tell us a little bit about him, please. Well, Kevin's big claim to fame is completing Mario in one hour, 15 minutes. He's used to jumping about on platforms. Mm -hmm. How he'll do on Yogi, we'll have to see. He's going first. Right, well, good luck to Mr. Oggy and start your challenge. <laughs> Racing through Jellystone Park. Right, Dave, the clocks. What's the clocks. that mean down here? The clocks are in the bottom left hand corner. They're counting down there. You can see how many clocks are meant to collect. The cake right. in the right hand corner. That's his life. That's Yogi's life. Every time he gets hit by Baddy, he loses a slice of that cake and a piece of his life. When he's got no more cake left, that's the end of his challenge on, and Yogi. the end of his life. It's a good game. Lots of the clocks are hidden high up and you have to jump on the baskets to get to them. But as you jump on the baskets, so they disappear behind you. So you have to be very very, very clever. At the moment he's got 24, 24 clocks. clocks. He's racing through Jellystone, 26 clocks. It's a good score. He's doing very well. If he gets up to 30, yeah, I think he's going to be quite confident. There we go, 31 clocks. Get up on those picnic baskets for the highest clocks. There we are. 34 clocks. Kevin scored 34, not bad. Next up is Matthew of the Elite 3. Dave, how 
elite is Matthew going to be? Well, Matthew's a very confident games player, and but he's not been boasting about his prowess, so we've got no figures on him. I guess he's going to let his joypad do the talking. Well, let's hope so. Start your challenge! Yeah! Okay, getting okay, those first three blocks for Jellystone. He knows what he has to do, but there are a lot of blocks hidden high up in the level, and that's it. And this is where you have to be very confident and very brave to leap across these baskets. They disappear He's behind you. He's leaping like a lizard, they Dave, isn't he? If you get nerves at all, you miss a basket, you're going to go the down. Ghost. You hear a ghost, you saw a piece of cake fly off gone. There. Those cakes are his life bar. His life bar is the big cake. Keep right jumping! Hand. His box that he has managed to actually score in this challenge is in the left hand corner. 30 seconds gone. And he's got 26 clocks already. He's doing very he's well. He's up some more clocks. He's going to have to get up to the higher Keep part going, areas of the screen to get some big, get big, big clocks of the clock. Four, three, he's not going to two, do it. Oh, yeah, he one. needs one more clock. Stop. Get up there. 36 clocks. 36 clocks. That's pretty good for Matthew the Elite 3. Next up is Ahmed of RCC. Dave, Ahmed, is he any good? Well, Ahmed claims to be an expert ninja of the nth dimension, having clocked Zool on the Amiga. And that's a platform game, so he should enjoy Yogi. Let's see how he does. Right, he's got 36 clocks to beat. And start your challenge! Go! Yeah! Okay, once again, these clocks at the start of the level are very easy. Jumping! Jumping up there! Get up! Higher up! Go on more! Very good. So all of our competitors have been really good is at jumping. It's a good idea to go up on the picnic boxes, though. It is. It is. There's lots of clocks hidden up there. But it's very tough jumping on those picnic boxes. Yeah. to the scoreboard and check what the current standings are. RCC didn't do very well on the first challenge, they got zilch. Right, second position is the Dundee Megabytes, did a bit better, they got two points, but out in front at the moment is the Elite Three with a Megamongus five points, give them a cheer. Yeah! Well, why do the Elite Three pat each other on the back and we generally go mad in here? Why don't you check out the reviews? See you in a sec. <laughs> curse has stricken the village of Horror Horror. Using the attack moves of Kid Ying and the brains of Dr. Yang, you must rescue the beloved princess and save the village in Legend of the Mystical Ninja for the SNES. Are you up to it? This is really, really smart. A mixture of 3D and 2D views. There's plenty to see, plenty to kick and plenty to jump across. The bulk of the game is a cutesy beat-em-up platformer. But get involved and you'll soon discover the feast of sub-games available. Well, this one's got another one of those amazing storylines where you have to sort of rescue a ghost princess before the dragon beast unleashes its mighty flame on your homeland. Oh dear. <laughs> The first Alone in the Dark on the PC won eight awards for its amazing 3D graphics and gameplay. Now you can continue your film-like adventures in the imaginatively titled follow-up, Alone in the Dark 2. This is a really stunning game and I cannot recommend it enough. The graphics are nothing short of stunning, using a revolutionary 3D polygon technique. I played Alone in the Dark 1 a little, but I think Alone in the Dark 2 on my PC uh, I'll spend a lot longer with. from the amazing virtual racing is the first fighting game to put you in a fully 3D environment. So you can punch your opponent out of the ring, fight back from the edge of the arena with eight different characters. It's a bone-crunchingly realistic gameplay, so can Ryo handle this kind of onslaught? Virtual fighting is hitting the arcades across the country right now. Check out these moves. Now, for a reminder of our Room of the Future competition, if you want to win any of these fabulous prizes, you still can. The entries with the code to enter the Room of the Future must reach us by Saturday the 29th. The winning names will be picked out of our mailbag and announced on next week's show. The address to send your answers to is Games Master, Room of the Future competition, PO Box 91, London, E14, 9GT. Good luck! Now we want to get on with the second challenge, so that's exactly what we're going to do. Oi, Games Master! For my next challenge, I've selected the high-powered racing game Lotus Turbo 2 for the Sega Mega Drive. 
The winner of this challenge will be the contestant who collects the most points by driving his car the greatest distance along the slippery ice track. Especially skilled racers will receive a massive 100,000 point bonus for making it to the checkpoint marked by a large orange banner. As usual, five points will be awarded to the highest score, two to the runners-up, and nothing to the losers. Burn it up, boys. Nice one, guys. Whilst up, right, the game is Lotus 2. The teams have got to get as far as they possibly can in 45 seconds. The further they get, the more points they score. And obviously, one with the most points wins the challenge. So, Earth ends up first of RCC. Dave, tell us a bit about Earth End. Well, Earth End's a real Mario Kart expert, so he should be used to controlling the car as it slides around the corner, because we've got a particularly slippy track for him. All right, then, Earth End, a start your challenge! <laughs> off he goes. He's off, he's off. Racing off into the night. It's it snowing, snow? Dave! snowing, it's lovely, but it's very, very treacherous for the drivers. The score is in the top right-hand side of the screen. Top left-hand side of the screen. That's the speed he's doing in kilometres per hour. He's shifting now. Interesting thing about this game is that Keep you going. can slide off the track and crash, but the car won't actually turn over. Seconds go. A crash sequence, because Lotus don't like people to think he's that motoring. Lotus can crash. 30 seconds very gone. strange. He's Keep doing very well so far, controlling it. He's getting overtaken a lot. He seems to have a lot of problems to keeping the car straight. As I said, this is a very slippery track. Ice is treacherous for the car. Well, Ewan's claim to fame is been able to complete striker scoring at least four goals in every match. Although that's not particularly relevant to this challenge. Yeah, what good's football in a challenge like this? He's got to do some driving. All right, then. Start your challenge. Off you go, mate. Good luck. He's away. OK. As I right, said, Ewan's a bit of a mixed batch because his claim to fame was his footballing prowess. I think he's maybe been hoping for a sporting game, but he's got a driving he's game. Doing well, and at the moment, he's, he's doing football very football well. And making his way on the track. If you hit the other cars, of course, you slow down. The and that means you, get, you don't get so far in the challenge. And the further you Give get, the more points you get. 30 seconds and that's going to win this game. 109, 200 ball an hour. Points to the top right hand side of the screen. Keep going, you've got 10 seconds. Ewing, it's clear out now. There's Five, nothing in front of him. Four, got the purple car. Three, He's got to get back. He's not reached one, the checkpoint yet. Stop the challenge. Ten, pretty impressive score, but not quite good enough yet. Next up is Ashton. He's the last one to take part in this challenge. Dave, is he a good driver or what? Well, Ashton, we don't know a lot about him. He's a bit of a mystery man, but in the practice room, he's clocking up some very good scores. All right, then. Well, let's hope he scores a good one this time. Start your challenge. Off you go. Good luck. OK. Pedal to the he's metal. Well underway. As Ashton screams off. Locks it in the foot gear. It's not always good Bang to accelerate away. too Ten. much too early on this. Go, go. Is the wheels slip on the car. You lose control. 215 kilometres per hour. Go on. Shows you how fast he's going. Obviously, the faster he gets going, put your foot further he'll get along the track. But the less control he has. Awful, freezing. I wouldn't want to be out driving in it, even if I had a Lotus. You need some. Uh, right, you've got 35 seconds gone. He's got 10 seconds left. He's doing pretty well. 45. Catching. Second place. In second place. Now he's doing very well. Than there, he got 106,720, but we need to go over to the scoreboard, see what the current standings are. Well, the Megabytes didn't do so well on that second challenge, they got zero points. Added to their two from the first challenge, that means they got two overall. Then the Elite Three, well, they came second in the last challenge, but they came first in the first challenge, means they got seven overall. But RCC ran away with that last challenge, they got five points there, but none in the first one, that means they got five overall. So out in front at the moment is the Elite Three with seven points. Give them a cheer! Yeah! Megabytes. Here they are. So, is the Megabytes. What went wrong? Tell us the story. Well, it was good in the practice, but the, 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 just the better man won. Well, the better man won on the day. How generous of him. Very nice. Well, it still doesn't save you. I'm still going to get the caretaker to take you out and eject you from the premises. Get rid of him, caretaker, please. Right, then, son. Well, there they go. We've still got an almighty clash to come in the second part. These two teams are still battling out for their place in the semi-final. And if that's not enough yeah, we've got a very special celebrity challenge. So, don't go too far. Only as far as the kitchen. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Oh, hello. There you are. 
All right, welcome back. It's time for our celebrity challenge. Okay, please give a big warm welcome and a big Games Master cheer for the UK snooker champion, Riley O'Sullivan, no less. Yeah. 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 Video game challenge. Well, I don't really play computers, but I've had a quick bash on a computer before I come here, so I've got a rough idea. All right, then, so do you want to pick out someone maybe to uh, take on a challenge against you? Yeah, I'd like to do a challenge against you. This lady here? This lady here, yeah. Jump up, here we go. Go, we got it. Go, go, go. What's your name? What's your name? Carla. Carla. Yeah. So, have you got a computer, Carla? Yeah. You have? What kind of computer have you got? Uh, Mega Drive and Mega CD. Oh, pretty flash. So, you're going to give Ronnie a good challenge? Yeah. Let's go to the Games Master, find out what this celebrity challenge is going to be. What better than to have our snooker champion celebrity and his opponent compete on side pocket for the Super Nintendo? Each contestant has five shots to clock up the highest score. A hundred points being awarded for each ball potted. The player with the most points will take home my precious golden joystick. The razor wheel of the game's boss for there, letting us know that the game is side pocket. Okay, Carla's up first. Dave, do you want to tell us a bit about this challenge? Well, Ronnie's nerves have already shown because the researchers caught him putting chalk all over his joypad. It was very, very messy. I don't think the golden joystick's going on his trophy shelf. This is going to be Carla's challenge. Well, let's wish him luck anyway. Carla's up first. Good luck, so she's got five shots to get as many points as she can. Start your challenge! I start. Carla's getting ready for the break. She's got full whack. She's going to get anything in there straight away. Yes, green. Yes, well, I've got no worries about Ronnie. I'm sure he's going to come through. OK, then, mate, good luck. Start your challenge. Yeah! Ronnie stepped up to the table. He knows exactly what he's got to do. He's not got yes, filter on the break. He's got a more subtle break. He's, he's played on. the greenie down he's got the as well. That's 100 points. He's got the blue star. He knows that's not relevant to the challenge. Oh, 200 the points well. with two balls. Doing well. He's on a par with Carl. Oh, oh, it goes the white. The white ball's gone in. It's going to be put back on the D. Wait, wait, wait. And he's going to have to start going for the no. blue ball because at the top of the screen that? where it says next, the blue ball's high. Oh, that ball's worth 200. And he's got to get that in now to draw with Carla. There's 200 points on the it's table with that blue ball. No, no, the terrible shot. He's not pulled oh, back. And he's not going to win tonight's challenge. Think you were gonna win? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did. You knew you were gonna win, did you? <laughs> yeah. So Ronnie, what'd you reckon to her performance? Quite good? Oh, oh she was Michael. she was wonderful. She was? She played brilliant. She did? So what do you think her chances are of becoming a snooker champion? Well she's as good as that on the snooker table, she's on the computer, she's got <laughs> very good chances. <laughs> well, good luck to both of you, nice one, thanks very much. And it's time to give you, Carla, your fabulous Games Master Golden Joystick. You want one? Yeah, yeah of course she does. Go <laughs> After that sharp shooting challenge, it's time for some people who haven't got a clue or a cue to go to the Games Master in the consultation zone. Welcome, one and all, to my games playing treasury. Games Master, when I'm playing the adventures of Super Dr. Franken on the snares, I keep dying. I do have a little something to help you. While you're standing at the very start of the level, press down and left. And you'll fall, travelling through the wall below you and into a secret chamber. Walk left and you'll hear a strange noise. This signifies that you've just picked up an extra life. Now, you might be able to make it just that little bit further. Thanks. 
playing Desert Strike on a Master System, but I can't manage to get to the second mission. I don't know what to do. Try this. At the start of the second mission, fly to a point just east of the POW camp. There you will find Jake, who has the fastest winch action and the best accuracy of all the co-pilots in the game. Next. On the cosmic space head for the Mega Drive, I can't get past the electric door on the Formica City level. Can you help me, please? First of all, you must collect the Formica City telekey, which gives you access to the teleports. Teleport from Old Lino Town to Formica, and you will find that when you exit the teleport, you now have two cosmics. Place one on the button, deactivating the electrified door. Then take the other cosmic through and stand him on the button the other side of the door. You can then take the first cosmic off the button without reactivating the electrified door and walk him through to safety. <laughs> what could be simpler? Thanks a million, Games Master. That's enough of my nuggets for one night. Ta-ta. Right, we've got one challenge left, and we've got two teams left. We only need one, so, uh, Erfan, 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 what do you reckon these, this, this team's chances are? Effect, they're nothing. <laughs> they're nothing? You ain't got a chance? What do you, what do you say to that? Almost no action. What's oh, it? Oh, these lot, yeah? What do you think of their performance so far? Mm, just scraped in on the last challenge. They it? just scraped in on the last just challenge. Just scraped in, I'll beat your team by 100,000 points. <laughs> well, yeah. there you go, 100,000 yeah. point challenge. Right, let's get straight on with the next challenge, because it promises to be a good one. Games Master, let's know what's happening. Yo, dudes. My final challenge is on the Funky Street basketball game, Janet for the Sega Mega Drive. The first of our contestants to score five baskets by any means will be tonight's winners. Let's slam Duncan. So, the game is Janet. We've got two teams left. We've got two in of uh, RCC. He's playing against Liam of the Elite Three. Dave, tell us a bit about these guys and their characters. Well, Liam's going to be playing as Slade in the blue kit. Chewin is going to be playing as Chill in the white and purple kit. And this is a vicious game. No holds barred basketball. They're going to have to do it out on the court. Right, the teams have got everything to play for. It's the first one to score five baskets. Good luck to both the teams. And start your challenge. Off you go. Good luck. Here they go. All right, Chill passes the ball to Slade. Slade's in the blue kit. Oh! He doesn't want to lose the ball because of the chance. Three, Press the advantage. Two, He's slammed into the basket. 4-2. Four, That's 4-2. Four, Next basket. Slade will win. Oh! No! 4-3. Shell gets a long one in. But all the points only count as one on this game. Slade's got to find a way into the basket and bury this one. And he's won the nice challenge. Oh, some good maneuvers. So Leon and Slade are going in. Mm, not so impressive. What went wrong? Well, he's better, better at the game than me, wasn't he? He was better at the game than you. What do you think of that? Was it luck? We're through there, not. Hey, you're, they're through. You're not. End of story. All right, lads. Well done. You're through to the semi-finals. Good luck with that. Right. Well, next week we've got Macho Man Randy Savage battling out on a challenge. Should be quite interesting. We've also got the final results of our Room of the Future competition. So, if you know anything about that, keep watching. Okay. We'll see you in a week's time for more battling action on Games Master. <laughs>